I guess that's just a piece of cardboard. I'm not sure about the scissors. Well, knife will do. Ah, little stylus. That's nice. And the scratch cover is suitably scratched. Connecting pins are already soldered in place. Teensy. This is a nice glossy laminated card of which I now have four. Ha! I guess this is a really neat little board here. And I don't need a knife for the envelope. The no pins. I have to use my own pins. Teensy is very teensy. Get some light on it there. This uh, PCB is partly wired. All of the pull-up resistors for the TFT are in place. And I just finished uh, making this uh, beautiful rainbow-colored uh, ribbon cable for attaching the TFT. And I'm going to do a power-up test on it. Um, the bench power supply is uh, in use for something else. This little adapter was for a different project. The um, the cell phone SDR project, which I don't think I've posted yet. So here goes. Um, how am I going to do this? Uh, holding the phone in my hand. Uh, in we go. And over here. Ah. Well, I knew that it was going to work because this is the second time I've powered it on. Okay, there's a station on. Rather weak at the moment. Um, the spectrum display is uh, decoration because uh, I'm just taking audio from the headphone jack and running it straight into the ADC. 
and that's what's generating the uh, the spectrum display. Um, <clears throat> essentially, it's a small passband with a CW filter, only a few hundred hertz, uh, and the total uh, display is four kilohertz. So this is about one kilohertz here and then below. I'm going to adjust the RIT just to see what happens. And we heard the change in tone. We're 100 hertz uh, above the frequency, back where we were. Now I can tune from here. Um, let me see. Of course, I don't know where anything is. So on the touch screen you've got it where you can change the frequency by touching the top or bottom of the numbers to go up or down, right? That's the way it works, yes. And the RIT I just um, tuned by steps. And I can't actually set the step here. I set it on the hilltopper, but if I change the step, see it shows me what the step is over here. And it's also showing what the internal keyer speed is set to a very small print on there. I'm using a, the FFT library, the Arduino FFT library, uh, for this, for the dis, for uh, generating the data for these displays. And then um, this is a Teensy 3.5, and we have a cat communication. Uh, via a serial link here. Uh, this is a serial cable going into the hilltopper. It's basically the same as having a computer attached as far as the information exchange is concerned because um, this is not directly controlling anything in here. It's simply sending messages and receiving messages Okay, that guy must be uh, He's calling. He's trying to call. Okay, Suara is supposed to be on that. Frequency. On 7033, yeah. Wow. A nice signal. Yeah, I'll say, well, that was a K4, wasn't it? I'm getting rather far off the frequency here. Let me go back. Those stations might be calling the DX station, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Doesn't sound like he's operating the split. Oh, I'm at five. No wonder he's getting far off. I was at 500. Okay. Oh, he got him. Well, there's only so much you can show about it, I guess. I mean, I can turn the speed here. And it goes up over here. That's because I'm using uh, Z commands. I made up. I made up a couple of Z commands uh, that are, you know, like uh, the cat control. They're, they're cat control commands, but they're they're not part of any standard. I don't think there is any, any standard. Truthfully, it's each vendor does their own thing. There are some commands that are similar, similar from one to the next, like uh, the frequency command FA FB. The VFO commands.